what is going on boys and girls of youtube today's video is something i've always wanted to do but also been kind of worried about how to go about doing it without missing information or giving you information that isn't easy to process i wasn't sure how i was going to go about it and the more questions i get on it and the more requests i have to do it i figure i'll just do it and having something out there is going to be better than nothing and if you guys have any questions still after this uh you can ask me in the comments you can ask me in my stream you can ask me anywhere really if i see you ask i will do my best to respond and answer the goal of this video is to go over the general rules of building i can't teach you how to individually build each god in a video it's never going to happen anyone who says they can do that is lying to you the game changes so much and understanding of the game comes from hours and hours and hours of playing now smite source is there the website is there for you guys to go use and copy build which is what i recommend when you start playing the game when i first started playing the game i would pull up the top jungler stream i would find where he played the god i wanted to play and i would copy I would, I would memorize the build and then i would go build it and i did that for a long time until i got good or not like i until i got really good and i could process when i wanted to do different things or when the builds were different or changed or you know i i knew what all the items did i knew why they were good when they were good and how they were good that comes from playing that doesn't come from me telling you specifically this but what i can do is give you general rules for a lot of the roles that will potentially help you understand what's going on and what you're doing and a big video, I've had newer players, um, friends that want to play the game that are like, I don't understand counter building. So that's another thing I want to talk about in the video. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to, you know, have to explain it in terms of like this God and that God and stuff like that. But I'm going to do the best I can. Okay. Don't fault me. This is not a perfect video. This is a very difficult topic to cover in a video. It's, I have pages of notes here and I can't use them all. It's just never going to work out. So basic rules of smite building. I want to start with hunters and this will be in general, but I want to start with hunters. There are two types of hunters, right? There's ability and there's a, you have people play the game all the time. No, it's obvious. People who don't, don't understand that characters that usually have stims, which either increase your attack speed or increase your attack damage are usually going to be built AA pen based, which is a raw build that revolves around building the core attack speed items like XC kins, having close to cap attack speed and having a lot of pen so you can kill tanks running at you. Straightforward, right? The other side is ability hunters, which would be someone like AMC, like Scotty, like Martikaris. Those gods have multiple damaging abilities, three, four damaging abilities. Most of them have, you know, three or four. They have high base numbers and they usually don't have stims, like abilities that increase their auto attack damage necessarily. Like Wool has it, Outlier, he does way more damage than his ability. It's a hard rule to follow. You have to really know the information of what gods are ability and what gods are AA to know this, but that'll separate builds. So what makes what I have that question a lot, so I wanted to just talk about it. It's usually those rules. That's just how it works out. So in terms of hunters, you're not going to apply these rules. These are just a general rule of smite. Flat pen is almost always better early because if someone has 100 protections and you have 10 flat pen, which means you take 10 of those 100 protections away, so they're at 90, that has way more value than when somebody has 200 protections and you're only taking 10 of 200, that's 190, right? Where, you know, early you're going to have 100 protections, late game you have 200, 300. With percent pen, is going to be better mid to late game because percent pen is a percentage of that total number. So 10% of 100 is 10 where 10 percent of 200 is 20 you're gaining protections as they increase their defense that's a general rule so early in a build you're usually building flat pen mid and late in a build you're usually building percent pen the game has always been like that there are outliers there are builds that change and min maxing because of the procs and passives on abilities or on items that will change and that will change the way orders are sometimes but those are general rules so if you're like should i go spear the magus or should i go jotun's last no because they have nowhere near as much value late as they did early. So you should have built them early if you wanted to build them. And once you've chosen not to build them, they're no longer in the build. Simple way to look at building. That's that's very, very basic. In ranked, cooldown has way more value than in the SPL. If you're looking at SPL players, a lot of the times in their builds, they do not prioritize cooldown or items like Jotun's because they aren't spam fighting 24-7. An SPL game, you go 40 minutes with 10 kills. Your ranked game will go four minutes with 10 kills. So having cooldown in ranked has way more value and is why you want to have it. And building cooldown early in a build, somewhere to flat pen you want to build cooldown earlier in a build because you get more value out of that throughout a match if you have 40 percent cooldown at the 15 minute mark you're getting that many more abilities off for the rest of the game if you get 40 percent cooldown at the 40 minute mark you might only get an extra five abilities off in a whole match that's not really worth it at all at that point you've gone too far hunters never build defense ever 
mages will rarely ever build defense if you're like oh they you know they're focusing me i need defense you probably don't you need to position better simple on assassins you will rarely build defense unless you're going to commit to a tankier build and in your build the one defensive item that is more valuable on assassins than any other class is magi's cloak uh you're one of the few cl classes that wants to dive and be in and out real fast so magi's cloak allows for that so that is a very good item on assassins while not being very good on hunters and mages which seems weird because they're all damage dealers but it's because of the positioning and the way the games play out so those are just core basic building rules for smite gods for the damage dealers for the most part for tanks general rule of thumb still applies most of those things still apply cooldown better earlier and way better in rank than it is in competitive really you're not going to go flat pen on most tanks or percent pen on most tanks in solo or as a guardian it's very rarely going to happen but if you are something like a stone of binding on a support or on a solo laner will have more value early than it will late same rules it's for the same exact reason it's nothing too crazy when building a tank your defense needs to be built based on what you are playing against your goal as a tank is to have close to cap defense so 325 physical 325 magical assuming they have a fair amount they have three fizz three magical or three magical two fizz so they have a good amount of damage of both you usually want to have close to cap cooldown so 30 to 40 percent and as a support you want to maintain a lot of auras right now because they're very strong auras are the passives on items that radiate out to your teammates that you're standing around and usually makes them insanely tanky tanks support or sorry uh solo laners solo lane tanks usually want to get their yellow number items uh, and focus on having yellow number items in place of aura items where yellow number items are like your glad shields and blue stones and stuff like that like procs on abilities from items going to be very very important to you those are the two differences between really the, <laughs> some of the only differences between tanks in support and tanks in solo and that's it's that simple um biggest thing you can do when building is as the game is starting look at the enemy team and be like they have x amount of physical x amount of magical mage damage is usually avoidable if you're paying attention so if you have to weigh one or the other you usually want to weigh more towards physical defense over magical in a situation like that but if it's five fizz only build physical defense if it's five magical only build magical defense change your build up you can't really mess up at that point because you have so much extra space for items that you wouldn't normally build if they're heavily catered towards physical damage they have four fizz one magical probably build more physical up front and get your magical later because that magical damage is going to be less of a problem for you throughout the whole match especially earlier build based around what the enemy team is in your order form so if it's heavy magical and you have a magical in your lane build magical defense if it's too physical in your lane, build physical defense first. It's very simple stuff. It's not anything you need to overthink. This should be really like someone who's played for a long time. It's super obvious. And I think some people get caught up in the idea they have to build X item or they have to build this or they have to do this specific thing. They don't. They good players are looking like at the basic stuff. They have physical, they have magical, they have four, but fizz, they have four, magical, whatever. That's what we're looking at. Now, where the game can seem difficult. I, I'm using quotes because to me, once you've you know had someone explain it to you or you've processed it, it's very basic. Something most people want to be over the top with and think is over the top is counter building. So that's what we'll talk about next because I feel like I covered most of the main rules of just general builds. It's not, like I said, I'm not getting anything too specific here. Just really general stuff. Counter building is where people start getting all crazy and they're like, I don't know how to counter build. It's too hard. It's nowhere near as in-depth as a lot of people make it out to be, especially lower level players. They think it's like some crazy process. It's not, I promise. There's some very basic rules. If they have healing, build anti-heal. If the healing is in your lane, build it earlier. If the healing is in a lane you will interact with in the late game, build it later. If it's in a lane that you will interact with in the mid game, build it in the mid game. <laughs> And that it's that simple. If you have a healer in your lane, if there's a hell support, your support player, you need to build anti-heal second item latest, please. If they have a core healer, throw on the idea of anti-heal, they have a core healer. So something that automatically has built in healing and will be healing in, in the in the fight. Aphrodite, Hell, Guan Yu, Ra. Gods that just raw heal, Ankh is a must. If they have a power healer like that in the game, build Ankh as a support build it as a solo one of you has to build it or both of you if they have two off healers so gods that may be healing themselves a little bit hades 
Hercules, anything that just has micro healing, then, and if they have two of those, you're probably looking at an Ankh. You're already looking at anti-heal items, so please understand that. You need to have anti-heal items once there's two of these. This should be obvious. But micro healing with an Ankh and having an Ankh can completely turn a team fight. Horus would be one of those I would consider more micro healing than main healing because he uses his dash to heal for sure but it's lower amounts and he's usually using it as a disengage uh but even chalk heals healing out of you know side type rolls like a collie heals off of an alt thanatos healing off of a one if there's if there's multiple of those that's when you're looking at ankh multiple small healers versus one big healer you're looking at an ankh anti-heal in all these situations i realize you think oh i don't need to counter build for these people it makes the game easier you're overthinking what you're going to get from an item that's going to replace a Brawler's Beat Stick or a Divine Ruin or a Pestilence or Contagion. You're overthinking it. All those items are very good, and it will stop people from doing what they're meant to do with their kits. <laughs> so please build in those situations and make sure you're building them in, in general. We talked about checking to see what type of damage the enemy team has and how many gods of that type of damage. So they have three Fizz, they have three Magical, two Fizz, two Magical, whatever. That is important when counter building. Because if, like, like we talked about as a tank, if their primary damage source for gods is physical, you need to have way more physical than you need to have magical. And you don't need a lot of magical. You don't need to cap magical at that point, right? Unless that person starts carrying, then shift it up in the end game build and build magical. Like you build for what you need. And off of a paper stance, like you're looking at just the gods, the type of damage they're doing, the paper's telling you, hey, I'm going to need physical defense, right? They have four fists. Or, hey, I'm going to need magical defense. They have four magical. That's simple. Most of you guys should be getting that when you're looking at tanks. When you're in solo lane or even in the duo lane, once again, I want to reiterate this. The damage that you're dealing with up front in the beginning, build that defense first. So if you're against a guardian in the solo lane, build magic defense. You're against a mage in the solo lane, build magic defense. You're against a guardian and a mage ADC in the duo lane, build magic defense first. It, it will help you a lot more than trying to get a physical defense item in. That will hurt you. Spectral should really only be built once there's two crit items on a god. If a hunter builds a uh, demon blade and you build spectral to counter it, that hunter has an advantage on you. You've committed a lot of gold and a lot of time to an item that's only kind of a little bit useful because if that hunter realizes, hey, he is spectral, I'm not gonna build any more crit. He's got, he, he's outplayed you essentially when building um, because basically timing. <laughs> that's basically all it comes down to is timing and basic information. Wait for a second item crit item to either be started or finished before you decide you need a spectral. I have seen so much lately, they buff spectral. People build spectral second, third item in these tank rolls and then nobody builds crit, which is really embarrassing and sad. So with spectral building, you want to build it into crit gods, but you want to build it once they have a second item finished or they're started on that second item. So you're getting as much value out of the item as they are out of theirs, and you're taking more away from them. If they have multiple AA gods, right? So they have a hunter and a nem, a hunter and a merc, uh, a hunter and a Kali, two hunters. They have mage ADCs that are that are going, you know, Freya or just... Uh, uh, soul building ma or auto attack uh type magic items build horrific horrific has an attack speed slow on it it's already a very good active it has so, so much use between the slow the attack speed slow everything else you're not losing out by going that and you are dramatically hindering the enemy team it's a good counter build where you don't lose out on anything it's it's just a very simple thing two a gods horrific if you're playing a tank and they have a comp that can kill you you're playing Ymir, you're playing, I don't know, Kepri, you're playing somebody that doesn't get out for free or have super save. You're playing Ardeo, right? You're playing any of those gods. And then they pick Ares. You're like, dang, they could ult me on cooldown and kill me. They pick Fenrir. They could pick me up and kill me. And you will, those kind of gods should kill you on cooldown for the first 10 minutes of the game. And then if they kill you for the first 10 minutes of the game, the rest of the game, you're not tanky because you're so far behind. Build beads. If they have a comp that can kill you, build beads. So that way you never find out if they wanted to focus you or not. It's very, very valuable to trade out an early shell for a beads that's going to keep you from being targeted for three or four deaths. You see it in the SPL a lot. You see it in higher level ranked a lot. It sounds basic, but once again, looking at the enemy team, hey, I don't have a CC immune ult and they have all these gods that can pull me and kill me or pick me up and kill me or just lock me down and kill me. Build beads. Think about the fact that your beads could counter an air result and make that air result worthless, or your beads could stop Fender ult from getting something. So that minute and a half cooldown, 60 second cooldown, whatever from Fender is just wasted uh, because you decided to go good active. So that's something you need to look at. And then really the last thing out of tanks and counter building, if they have a lot of slows and you aren't a highly mobile God, you know, you're playing an Ares or you're playing a Ymir, those gods that are immobile, 
wing blade throw it into your build it's a selfish item but that's perfectly fine it'll keep you alive it's similar to a bead situation but it's a cheap item it has good stats not amazing stats but pretty good stats and it will keep you alive so make sure you're going into that most of counter building comes into the tank play most of counter building is not going to apply to hunters most hunters pretty much every hunter will build the same build every single game i said earlier hunters do not force anti-heal they do not build defense if anti-heal is in the kit you know, you're an ability hunter and you want to need a brawlers. That's fine. That's not forcing it. But if you're an AA hunter and you throw in a toxic blade, that's bad. You're losing out on a ton of stats. You can't do that. Or you're an AA hunter and you build brawlers. You're missing out on a ton of stats. Let your team answer the healing with some anti-heal. You don't have to deal with that. Hunter builds are almost always the exact same. You can go to smite source, copy the build and build the same build over and over and over and over and over and over. And that will only change when the patch changes or the SPL hunters find something better mathematically. That's the only way that'll change. Mages, very rarely counter building outside of just throwing an anti-heal into your build and the anti-heal is usually an easy swap most mages right now are building spear of the magus swapping a divine ruin over the spear of the magus that simple you lose a little bit of cdr but you gain this major passive that's necessary to win the game super basic as a jungler similar to mages you want to build brawlers because most junglers are ability based you want to build brawlers when you are an ability hunter or sorry ability assassin and you'll swap it out for a basic cooldown item like or even a percent pen item sometimes you can't mess up an assassin build as long as you have a little bit of percent pen 20 percent 30 percent 40 40 percent somewhere in there uh you have cooldown you have power you have pen You'll be all right. You won't mess up by building up brawlers, I promise. If you're an auto attack assassin, you're usually not building anti-heal. Very similar to hunters. You follow similar rules because you're building very similarly. Why it's not the exact same items, it's the same play style, just melee versus range. That's super, super basic. There are outliers in all of these building rules. There are gods that build completely different because their kits are weird. Hades, Anubis, you got full lifesteal on those gods. John Kui, because it's a up close mage that needs to live for a while. There are outliers, 100%. But for the most part, and most of the core stuff you'll be playing, they build and play and go about build, like builds and counter builds the exact same. Those do not change. There are some warriors that are different. Uh, you know, you've got your AA warriors, your Bologna, your Amaterasu. Those you'll build slightly differently. And those are builds you just want to go copy and start learning from there because they're unique. They're different. Um, they aren't something that have the same rule sets because their kits are different. They're meant to be played differently. That's how high res has them set up. And that's it. That's it. It's that simple. Building is that simple. It's, you know, I went over it. It's a 20 minute video. I realized it's a little bit longer, but basic rules, basic understanding of the game, and you'll be able to apply this stuff forever. These rules have been the same for 10 years. I don't think they will ever change for the most part, unless it's a major mechanic change to smite. And when that happens, you'll know about it because it'll be a hype video and everyone will be talking about it. So. Hopefully this helps you build a little bit. Um, I hope you aren't overthinking too much in terms of tier ones and tier twos. And when do I buy this? Usually you'll upgrade your starter once you have your fifth item finished. So you'll have a five item, you know, four items in your actual kit. And then you'll have a starter finished. And then you'll finish that last item later. When to upgrade your actives is completely up to you. If you're being targeted a lot, upgrade your beads early. If you're not, upgrade them never. A lot, most games, if I'm not the target and the person being killed, I don't upgrade my actives. If you're a solo, upgrade your TP very early. Usually by your third back, your upgrade, your teleport, third or fourth back, your teleport is fully upgraded. If you're a support, usually after your second or third item, you upgrade your actives because they're very valuable to the team. That's simple. In terms of tier one, tier two, tier three, when do you buy this? Just buy them as you can. Make sure you're getting awards and you'll be all right. That's building. That's it. That's it. Hopefully this helps you. Hit the like button if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the video later tomorrow, the next day, the next day, and the next day.